Now I love a good bargain, and in astrophotography that generally means finding a product that does the same job as a familiar favourite, but at a much cheaper price. Which is what has led me to discovering the super powerful TubeTech ATR 2600C camera, a worthy adversary to the extremely beloved ASI 2600MC by ZWO. In today's video I'm going to be putting this TubeTech camera to the test, but perhaps more excitedly I'm going to be exploring who on earth TubeTech are, and how they are offering some of the most exciting products in our field for a fraction of the mainstream costs. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. 16-bit, 26 megapixel images. Wow. That must cost a lot, right? Well, here in the UK, it can certainly be purchased for a lot cheaper than the ASI 2600MC. As for the US, it seems to basically be the same price across the board, with the TubeTech being marginally cheaper. Now, why am I comparing these two cameras? Simple. They use the same sensor, an IMX571. You can wrap up the camera however you like, but the core most essential component is its sensor. The IMX571 is fast becoming one of the most universally loved sensors for amateur astrophotographers. When used for this TubeTech camera, it offers stunning 16-bit 26 megapixel images with decently large pixels at 3.76 micrometers. It also provides zero amp glow and extremely low read noise between 1.14 to 2.4. And then finally, this isn't to do with the sensor, but still a feature of the camera worth mentioning, it provides a regulated two-stage tech cooling of 42 degrees below ambient temperature. If you're looking for a more advanced camera than this, you're going to have to spend at least two to three times more money. All right, time for a direct image comparison, which to be honest, I don't necessarily agree with since for a perfect comparison, you would need two identical telescopes mounted onto the same mount capturing images at the exact same time, which is more difficult than it sounds. Instead, here are images of the Andromeda galaxy captured by each of the cameras on separate nights and for fairly different exposure times. You can pixel peep all you want or whatever you feel you need to do, but I could already tell from their raw stacked images that they were very similar. You can of course raise the question as to which camera produces images that contain better data and are therefore edited better, but there's just too many variables for my liking. I think you can agree that the image quality is to a similar level in either image. I have actually been doing a number of comparison videos on this trip, and in my soon to be released video comparing the Play One Uranus camera, the ASI 585MC camera and the SV Bonnie 705 camera, the Play One and ASI cameras were impossible to separate. For some reason, the SV Bonnie camera really suffered. Now, all three of these cameras have the exact same sensor, so I'd love to say it's as simple as it's the same sensor, therefore the exact same camera, but it's not. Some brands will undercut the quality of their cameras just to say that they are the cheapest. However, TubeTech has held its own here and rightfully deserved its place alongside ZWO and Play One cameras in terms of quality builds. So explicitly, what is it that TubeTech cameras are better at than the ASI 2600 MC Pro? And what is it worse at? Well, as for better, I have never used a camera that has so efficiently cooled itself down before. With the ASI 2600, it takes about 6 minutes to go down from just over 10 degrees Celsius to minus 10. Now that's a lot of time waiting around to image. With the TubeTech though, I had to assume there was some sort of error, because it was able to cool down to minus 10 in 22 seconds. That's absurd. I searched up other users' reviews of this camera and they are all in agreement. The cooling system on the TubeTech is phenomenal. TubeTech also has a unique low conversion gain and a high conversion gain feature that gives you a bit more freedom into how you wish to capture your images, which I'm sure some users will find very handy. As for the bad, what is this? Why have they gone for this as the cap for the camera? For comparison, this is the screw cap for the ASI 2600. It's solid, it's tight, and it stops air and dust from getting in. I'll put it into its carry case and I know it's safe. But this little rubber thingy is essentially a dust magnet. Don't get me wrong, it's nice only having to slip or peel this thing in or out. It's a lot quicker than unscrewing and far more quieter. But yeah, not really a fan of that. Otherwise, there's not too much to compare between the cameras. Obviously, one's blue, one's red, and the TubeTech is a lot more compact than the ASI 2600. Now, as I was finishing this review on the balcony, I came to the conclusion that I should give the ASI 2600 the edge simply because of how incredibly useful I find the ASI Air. The ASI Air is a little piece of magic. It allows you to control all of your astrophotography gear from your smartphone. The one major issue users have with it is that it only allows the connection of ZWO cameras and a ZWO focuser, which makes it incredibly restrictive. But get this, TubeTech, the same company that made this ATR2600 camera, has just started releasing its own version of the ASI Air, known as the Astro Station. And like the brilliant buggers that they are, they have made their version accessible to all. 
nice. There are no limits whatsoever on the gear that can be attached, which means this new Astro Station device could possibly be about to change the game for many astrophotographers. But the more you go digging into what this lesser known company TubeTech has to offer, the more gems you start to find. Which is why for the remainder of this review, I'm not going to solely focus on their ATR 2600 camera, even though I said I would, because I think it would be far more interesting to explore their diverse product range. Check it out. They have their own product versions of practically every single popular astronomy camera. How have I never heard of this before? Now the prices are not significantly cheaper, but perhaps just enough to warrant your attention. I've only heard positive things from other users when discussing their customer service interactions, and I can hand on heart say from my own discussions with them that they have been a delight to deal with. Extremely attentive. It only took them three days to have the camera delivered to me from China. They've even released their own electronic focuser, which I was tempted to buy when I saw it listed on their website at $179, which is cheaper than ZWO's. But I then had no choice but to buy it when it somehow popped up on my AliExpress feed at half the price. Yeah, that's really weird, isn't it? The funny thing is, it's the real deal as well. I've been using their AAF on my Ascar 71F, and it has been doing the job very nicely. It's easy to control and even comes with a temperature sensor and a remote control, although I mostly use my computer to control the focuser. So the bottom line is, the ATR 2600 is breathtakingly good, and even if the camera is still outside your current price range, then there's no need to worry because there's still a wide list of worthy cost-effective alternatives available on their website. From what I've experienced so far, solid company, good products and great prices. With the very soon to be released Astro Station, exciting times are still yet to come. Once I get some clearer skies, I'll be releasing a full review video on the Astro Station. Until then, I've attached links to the ATR 2600C and the rest of TubeTech's products in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.